Well, I'm guessing I'm like you in that I hate wasting money on cleaning supplies. When you buy something that you think is gonna be really great, only to find out that it wasn't worth it. Joshua Becker will often say, see that stuff? That's where your money used to be. And, and that's always going through the back of my mind, but it's tough because finding the right cleaning products is often like finding the right moisturizer. It feels like you have to try a bunch before you find the stuff that actually works. And so today, I wanted to try out some of this stuff for you. All of this stuff behind me are things that have been recommended by other people on YouTube and Instagram. And so I'm gonna waste the money for you so you don't have to. We're gonna try these out. We're gonna do side-by-side -side comparisons, see which ones work and which ones are headed back out. Now I'll admit, I'm a novice when it comes to cleaning. Even uh, I was in the middle of doing the oven door and my mom called during that and she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like cleaning the glass in between the oven door and she was like, why would you do that? There wasn't time for spring cleaning and cleaning routines when we were growing up. It's just how it was. And so I've come to rely on the expertise of others around me and the products that they recommend. So I gathered together a bunch of stuff that has been recommended by others and we're gonna test it out today. And I will say there are some real winners here and there are a few things that I definitely could do without so I do know one thing and that's we should start at the top and work our way down so here are the tasks we're gonna do today we are gonna dust we're gonna clean the walls and windows we're gonna give the oven a really good deep cleaning including getting between the glass in the door we'll scrub the sink and shower too and make sure the floor gets thoroughly cleaned so Cass from Clutterbug always talks about the Swiffer duster. She said she was surprised when one time they hired someone to come and clean their house and they were using a Swiffer duster. So the goal is to use this to get everything that's high up. So our light fixtures, the tops of picture frames, ceiling fan blades, we wanna try it out on this. And so my only hesitation really is that it's just one more thing to store and could I get by just using my microfiber cloths like I have done in the past. And so we're gonna test it out and see if it's worth it. All right, you're supposed to fluff them, but it, it's very strange. It looks kind of like um, fiberglass insulation. Adeline's like, should I touch it? <laughs> like I, it says to fluff them, so. But that's good because she had also asked like, okay, is this gonna push the dust around or will it actually like cling? And so this is making me hopeful that it's gonna cling pretty good. I mean, our spaces are pretty dusty, so it's gonna push some, but I think this could uh, really trap a lot of it. So we'll start with something easy like the tops of these picture frames and also our light fixtures and then then we'll move on to the ceiling fan. This really does seem to grab it well and not just push it around. And I can't forget to mention that this video is part of our April Mega Motivation collaboration. So you can find a playlist down below with over 20 other spring clean with me videos. So if you need some extra motivation, someone to keep you company while you're cleaning, be sure to check out that playlist. We're gonna need something. Um, I think it's gonna take a little more than just the Swiffer on this guy. So I'm gonna grab one of my microfiber cloths. I think because this one's in the kitchen, it's just everything's a little more stuck on, which is fine. Wow. And I mean, I honestly have not done that this since we put it in two years ago. So. It's, it's a little overdue. All right, so of course if we're spring cleaning, we have to do fan blades, right? Um, these are, this fan hasn't even been in a year. So, um, it, but we've been doing projects and Tom's been cutting plaster and all that. So. These are pretty gross. So I had read a tip. I'm I'm very pleased with the Swiffer duster so far, but I don't know if I trust it this much without at least covering our bed. So I had read a tip where you use a pillowcase to kind of slide like the bulk of the dust off into the pillowcase. So I think I'll do the pillowcase and then I'll go back and use the Swiffer duster over it. Oh, that, that works pretty good. Let's see if I can get a little more. I mean, I can't see on top of these, so I have no idea, but. I feel like it's, I don't know. It looks a lot cleaner, so. It's definitely easy to 
keep it into the pillowcase. I don't know if you can really see how much dust it's getting in there. I think it's working pretty good. So I'm trying to kind of like get the edge and then go back and just like run my hand flat over the whole blade again. Sorry, <laughs> can't really see what I'm doing. But how many do we have left to do? I think we just have one left. I think they're pretty good. I think I'm just gonna go over them again now with this guy, and then I think we'll be like really good. I should have used a clean one of these, then I would know like if I'm actually <laughs> getting anything off or not. Doing a find a clean spot. No, that's not clean either. All right, I think that's all of them, and it didn't really take too long. Okay, let's talk microfiber cloths for a few minutes. I some great friends who sell Norwex. They're great, they're antibacterial. They're just a little spendy, right? And I'm so cheap, especially when it comes to stuff that like nobody sees and I don't know. And I, and I also worry then, like I feel like I have to protect it if I've spent a lot of money on it. Like if the kids go to grab it or Tom, I'm like, no, that's my good cloth, right? So I wanted to try out some less expensive options as well. So these were recommended by Jen from The Rambling Redhead. Now these are more like a dishcloth or washcloth size. I don't know, what do you call them, a dishcloth? And what's kind of deceiving is they really just look like fleece and the edges aren't really anything fancy, but we'll talk about these. I've come to really like them. And then we have e-cloths. So Jordan Page from Fun Cheaper Free talks about these quite a bit. She swears by these and says they're really great because you only just need water. And then we have the cheap microfiber <laughs> cloths. Again, I'm gonna always try to get by with like the cheapest option possible that still works well because I don't wanna have to work any harder than I have to. So these are the, the lesser expensive ones. So we're gonna put them to work on the cabinets and walls and well, uh, throughout this whole video, you're gonna see these um, side by side. Okay, so now we are gonna clean windows and I wanted to compare um, the cheapo microfiber with the actual window cloth from eCloth with my favorite little guy here. And I'm gonna use uh, Catherine from Do It On A Dime. I always recommends this from the dollar store. It's the totally awesome window cleaner with vinegar in it. I've been using it for a, quite a while too and I really like it and it's only a dollar so you can't go wrong. And luckily we have lots of dirty windows so I can give a good assessment of which of these works the best. It's actually surprisingly difficult to show how dirty windows are on video but I think you know, knowing we have four kids, you can probably <laughs> take my word for it. All right, so I think all three of these actually worked well, but if I had to pick a winner, it was this guy. I think because the windows were really dirty, I didn't feel like I had to scrub very much. With this one, I kind of felt like I had to scrub a little more, and this one kind of pushed the cleaner around and wasn't quite as absorbent. So the least amount of work, I think, was this one. But I'm gonna try it on one more window because this window above the sink, it's um, really, it gets splashed with water a lot, so it's always a little bit harder to clean. So I'm gonna give them each one more shot and see if it actually makes a difference because I think if I had any of these handy, I would just grab them and it would work just fine. All right, so after doing this window above the sink and doing a couple mirrors in the bathroom, I'm gonna say this guy is the winner. I don't know if it, maybe because everything's really dirty, this seems to work really well. I think if your windows weren't that dirty, I think this would work well too, but I'm trying to have as few cloths and stuff as possible. So if I can get by with just having these two in the house, I, I would prefer that than having another one that's specific to certain tasks. So I'm happy that this does a good job. And like I said, I usually just grab what's ever handy and any of these would have worked fine. Okay, so you don't have to look very far to see that all of our cabinets and walls and doorways need to be wiped down. And so this is where I expect the e-cloths to shine. They say you only need to use water with them. So I'm gonna try water and I'm gonna compare it to our 
lesser expensive microfiber cloths. But if we need to, I also like the totally awesome cleaner from the dollar store. So first we'll try it with just water, but if that doesn't work super great, I don't wanna work harder than I have to, right? Okay, so this is working great with just water. I could see spraying it just if you wanna like pre-soak it a little bit, but otherwise, everything is totally coming off of the cabinets with this. I don't know if the walls are quite as forgiving, so I'm gonna try the other cloth on here with just water too, and then we'll move to some walls and see how that works. All right, we're gonna try this section of wall over here with this guy, as long as I already have it in my hand. I would say this worked just as well on the cabinet. So let's see how it works on the wall with just water. Okay, this is working really well, but I wanna show you there's a spot here that was kinda like dried on, stuck on, and that's where I'm thinking um, spraying on a cleaner first might work a little bit better. So right here, there's kind of like some dried on food, I don't know. And I think I could continue to scrub it off with this, but sometimes my experience has been it takes the paint with it. So I'm gonna spray it with the Awesome Cleaner and then we'll try both of the cloths with that. Okay, so when you buy it, it comes in a bottle like this and it's concentrated, so it gives um, instructions back here for how much to dilute it. So I just used an old method bottle, spray bottle, and mixed it up in here, I don't even know what I use, I guessed pretty roughly. But this has never like taken paint off the walls or done anything. This works especially well for car interiors. Um, if you're trying to get the interior, like the plastic interior clean back up, it works very well. But it works great on the walls too, so I'm gonna take this over and spray this on. And then I'm gonna spray down here too, there's some scuff marks, it's the black from our stools. I, I don't expect this to take it off, but we can try. I'm gonna spray this side too, and then I'm gonna let it soak for a second, and then we'll use both cloths to see if there's a difference. So far, I'm not actually really seeing much of a difference <laughs> between the two. Oh, that comes up like super easily now. Let's try this one too. Yeah, it's not the cloth, it's the cleaner. That just like wiped right off then after I, I sprayed it on. Okay, this is what I'm not so sure about. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of taking it off. A little bit but not super great I have to get this paint color back out and I find it easier just to paint over these than to try and like scrub and scrub and scrub to get it off so I would rather paint over it so I'm just gonna do that but I do see as long as I'm down here this looks kind of gross <laughs> so we'll do that real quick it's kind of amazing to me how I can live with these like crazy dirty spots in the house and not even realize it. So both of these have been working really well on the walls where there isn't anything really stuck on, so I've been trying to get all the walls. But for something like this that's pretty grimy, I'm gonna give it a quick spray and then I will use them both. Wow, this, it seriously just comes right off. This is awesome. I feel like if I'd have known how easy all this was, I would do it more. <laughs> Yeah, this one works great too. Actually, I need to make the kids do it more, right? <laughs> so, so far those are pretty inexpensive investments. So let's talk about something that's a little more expensive. So Catherine from Do It On A Dime, she actually did a whole video about having a steam cleaner and all of the different ways that she used it. Now, she bought one that was one level up and just a little bit more expensive, but it was out of stock everywhere, um, so I had to get the one that was one level down. So this is a Bissell Steam Shot, and I wanna give it a try, especially, well, we're just gonna go right to the hardest thing, <laughs> which is our oven. You could tell, like, between the glass, there was some drippings, the oven door, I mean, on the inside, I, I, I don't know if I've cleaned it. We're gonna be in our house five years now. I don't know if I've ever cleaned it. So it's bad, right? So I thought we would put this to the test because when she was showing her oven, I mean, she had awesome results. So we're gonna try it out. She also said that you could put vinegar in it. She showed that in the shower. Just so you know, in the instructions, it says if you put anything besides water in it, it'll void the warranty and it could damage the heating element, but I trust Catherine. So 
I wanted to put vinegar in it, especially for doing the oven. And so I put half water and half vinegar in it. And I wanted to try just doing half of it to see how well the steam shot would work. So I sprayed it down and I started scrubbing and scrubbing some more. And I, nothing was coming off super easily. Uh, let's just put it that way. And so I was feeling a little bit discouraged about it. Now, when it comes to cleaning, I try to just use baking soda and vinegar whenever possible. So I had seen another video recently where the gal just used baking soda and vinegar. So what she did was she first made a paste out of baking soda and water and she spread that all over the door and the inside of her oven. The key though is that it has to sit for three hours. So I put it on half of the door, closed it up and let it sit for three hours. Then when you come back, you put some vinegar in a spray bottle and you just mist it then with the vinegar. You want to be careful. What I've learned through this is to not spray too much on because it gets kind of messy. And then when I close the door, it dripped between the glass. So that wasn't good. <laughs> so don't go overboard with the vinegar, but I let that sit for a little bit and when I started scrubbing, I could not believe how well it worked. Now, like I said, I like to use vinegar and baking soda whenever possible. My favorite shower cleaner is Dawn dish soap and vinegar, but if it doesn't work really well, I'm just gonna go to a traditional cleaner because I don't wanna waste time. If the healthy option works, great, but if not, I'm gonna go to a cleaner. I was floored by how well this worked. I did not actually expect it to work that well, especially because that door was so gross. It worked really well. I hardly had to scrub it all and it came right off. So then I used like a bunch of napkins and paper towels to kind of sop it all up and clean it off. And I had to, there was like quite a bit of residue. So I had to spray it a few more times with the vinegar and clean it. And then I went back a final time with my method uh, degreaser that I really like and then gave it one final cleaning. So I was really happy with how clean the door came, but we had those like, drips between the glass and so then I really wanted to clean between the glass because it's spring cleaning right we're going all out and uh, I feel like I actually like can tackle things like this now because our house is simplified so again I watched a YouTube video I did my research and decided to start taking the door apart all right well I was gonna have Tom help me take apart the oven door to clean between the glass but um, you know I'm a capable person so I'm gonna give it a shot it has just like Philip head screws in it. I I've heard some ovens have kind of unique screws, but this should work. I feel like Jill on Home Improvement when she like goes out to the garage and borrows Tim's tools. <laughs> so this should do the trick. Oh, Tom just walked in. Shoot. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm gonna take the oven door apart, okay? Oh, come on. <laughs> At least he'll be here if anything goes wrong then. <laughs> We've never done this before. I just realized this screw is actually the one that holds the handle on, so. Oh, this is a long one. Tom can't resist helping me now. Wow, seriously. Okay. You wanna do this, Chris? How come that half is dirtier than this half? Because the steamer didn't work so well and I didn't want to go back and re-soak it with baking soda. <laughs> Next time around. <laughs> okay. Oh, alright. Oh, can you see that? Okay. Oh, the handle did come off. Okay. Alright, we'll show you how dirty this is here. Okay, so here's what it looks like. Sorry. What? Is that one this dirty? This is on the inside. I know there's this drip that I don't know how we'll we'll worry about that in a second. We gotta take care of these ones first. Alright, I actually heated up the steamer. Would you wanna grab it off the counter behind you? Wanna do it? This is the fun part. But I thought it doesn't work. So. It doesn't. I'm giving it another shot. Alright, well if it doesn't work, that's no fun. Oh. So. It's only fun if it works. I thought maybe you would know better how to use it. Try our new microfiber cloths. Oh, that's coming off pretty good. Okay. I don't feel like this was like crazy baked on like this stuff inside the door. So I feel like this is gonna work just fine to get this glass looking clean again. Okay, so that took care of the drips you could see from the outside on the glass, but Tom wants to go further. You could see this drip right yeah, there. Yeah, see it, that drip is a new drip that I think I did when uh, I was cleaning the inside door. 
because that it's still actually dripping. <laughs> so Tom wants to take it apart more to get to that glass. Oh goodness. Okay. Here, let's just I don't know if we'd recommend this at home. Mm. Okay. Should we take that out and try and clean it or what do you think? Or you just want Yes. Okay. Okay, so here it is out on the counter. So now we can just get it cleaned really well and put it back together. So what's kind of interesting is there was baking soda on the back here, but where the baking soda was, it just like wiped right off. So that baking soda really did work. Okay, so between the steam and then I sprayed it with vinegar and cleaned it up then with some paper towels and a microfiber cloth, I think it's ready. So this one, Tom, this was on the inside facing into the oven. Does that make a difference? And then this one was facing in from there. That's how I'm doing it. Awesome. I okay. I didn't like get- But it shouldn't make a difference, no? everything off all the edges because they're just getting covered up again and that's not my personality type so i'm actually surprised that's you took tom's it this far. well if you weren't here i wouldn't have taken it this far yeah, but if you didn't take that stuff out of the middle what's the point This insulation is kind of a pain too. I just realized the laundry is going. Hopefully it's not too loud. So when it comes to like the little nooks and crannies like around the base of the toilet, I actually like these guys. I just wet it down with some warm water and it works great. I find that like these bigger microfiber cloths are just too big. But like I said before, these just seem to really grab everything really well. And so like you can just wipe over it all once or twice, depending on how gross it's been. And it really gets everything. So like I said, at this point, I wasn't overly impressed with the steam shot, but that was a pretty tough job. So <laughs> the last time I cleaned my shower, I ran out of time and I didn't get the back section done. So I thought, hey, let's try it out in there. I still had the mixture of water and vinegar in it and that's what Catherine used in her shower. So I thought we would give it a shot. So I sprayed it all down with the steam shot and then started scrubbing. And I don't, am I using it, Catherine, am I using it wrong? Because it was not coming off easily. And like I said before, my go-to cleaner is vinegar and Dawn dish soap. And that seemed like it worked way better. So I don't know if it was user error or because my shower was so gross or what, but it, I don't know, it didn't work very well. So I ended up just taking my spray bottle with some vinegar in it, sprayed it down quick and finished it up and that seemed to work a little bit better. So I don't know, but I wasn't done with it yet. So then I wanted to try out doing the kitchen sink. All right, so then I brought it into the kitchen sink, which it just, it was kind of gross. And so I sprayed that down and scrubbed it. Now that did seem to work really well and scrubbed really easily. So then I just gave it a quick rinse and it did work well in there. But then I realized this, I didn't have this nozzle on it. I don't know how to take it. Oh, there we go. I was using it like this. It's not really a whole lot different. Do you see the different tips? They're kind of the same, but Gage was like, hey, what's this? And I'm like, oh, that's supposed to be on it. So I decided to give it another shot on the inside of the oven and it still, it didn't, it didn't really do anything. So I don't, I don't think this was the problem, unfortunately. So I'm going to see if there's some, anything else I can think of. I know the inside of the microwave. Okay. So I sprayed the whole inside of the microwave with this and it was fine. So I decided just to go back to my old trick of heating a mug of water for like two or three minutes. That steams up the whole inside of the microwave and then it really is pretty easy to wipe it down. 
That is unless your daughter heated up Crayola crayons in there and there's red speckles of wax all over it. So then I had to try out another thing that it's, so many people recommend these, is always having one of these scrapers. So I used this to scrape at the wax in there. I don't know how I've gotten by with not ever having these. So I bought a four pack on Amazon, very inexpensive. And this, I can tell this is gonna be a staple in our kitchen now moving forward, both when you're doing dishes, but also just cleaning. So I used this to scrape off the wax, came right off and gave the inside of the microwave a final wipe down. And ultimately, I don't think the steam shot was any better in there than just using the mug of water. So really when it comes down to it, my favorite dollar store cleaners are the totally awesome window cleaner and the totally awesome uh, all-purpose cleaner, all-purpose cleaner. These, I mean, for a dollar, you can't go wrong. The cleaners I invest a little bit more in, I really like this degreaser from Method. I get it at Target and Kitchen, like definitely when I'm cleaning off the top of the stove, inside of the microwave, this works really well. And then I generally have one of these uh, Mrs. Meyers all-purpose cleaners around, spraying down the counters and wiping them down. I like the peony scent. I got this one, uh, it's a geranium. It's not good. It smells like your grandma's cleaner. And I know we have some grandmas on here, but you you all are like, think of what your grandma used to clean. It just, I don't know, the scent kind of lingers, which is what I like about it, but I don't like when the scent lingers. So I'm not gonna get the geranium again, but I do like the peony one and the lavender one. So I will stick with those moving forward. All right, so last but not least, we need to give the floor a good scrubbing. So again, Catherine from Do It On A Dime says this is her favorite mop and bucket. Before this, I have been using a Norwex mop and I have kind of a love-hate relationship with it because it does a great job, but I don't always love having to peel off the pad, bring it to the sink, rinse it out, wring it out, put it back on, and then keep mopping again. And so it's just been okay. So this is more of a traditional mop where you put the water in it and then it has the little ringer basket. So you can just keep going. The only thing I don't like about it is that this is kind of bulky to store. We just don't have a lot of space for it. So it's been sitting on the floor in our laundry room. So, okay, so our floors are incredibly dirty because we have a remodeling project going on again. And so I have the mop bucket filled up with hot water. And then Melissa from Clean My Space talks about how on hardwood floors, you can usually get by with like pine saw or one of those cleaners, but on laminate or vinyl plank like we have, you wanna make sure that you use a cleaner specifically for that so you don't get that haze and streakiness. So this is the number one consumer rated cleaner for laminate and vinyl flooring, the Bona cleaner. You can get it like in different variations. You can get it in like a Swiffer style. I've never really had good luck with Swiffers. We're gonna spray down the floor with this first. It is really gross. <laughs> so we've used this a couple times and I really like it. Um, but we'll see today because the floors are very dusty if we can get everything up have it be streak free and I don't know just look nice <laughs> right I don't have like super fancy parameters for my cleaning products so the other nice part about this is that when you're done this the mop head can go right in the washing machine and I really like that the bucket and the foot pedal and everything for the price, it seems very sturdy and durable, so I feel like it'll last a long time. So I do I do think this was a good investment. I do think it'll cause us to wash the floor more frequently, but the really good part is that Tom and the kids think it's super fun to use, so they'll actually wash the floor more frequently, so that's the best part of all. Oh, and it's really easy to get the baseboards with this too, so I appreciate that as well. All right, so let's just recap the things I would and wouldn't buy again. This guy, the steam shot. Again, I might not be using it right, but I have to think ahead and know myself. Would I go through the effort to pull this out or would I be more likely just to use the stuff that I have handy already in the kitchen? And like I said, we don't have a lot of extra storage space, so it's just one more thing to have to store and manage. So I wouldn't get this again and I'm, I'll am i probably just donate it or sell it on Marketplace. These guys, I love these. I don't know what it is about them. It's just, they're so soft. It feels like when you're cleaning, like you don't even really mind. And there's been times where there's been like spaghetti sauce or something red on the stove or in a dish. And I, I'm like, oh, I almost don't even wanna wipe it with this cause they're so pretty, but they actually clean up really well. So I just wipe everything. I'll wipe up the floors, the walls. These I use for everything now and I would definitely get these again. And then the battle of the microfiber cloths. So the e-cloths, they're a little bit more expensive. I don't love the colors of them and they're a little bit smaller. And then we have the just cheapo microfiber cloths. 
I would get these because they're cheaper. I like the colors better. And like I said, I don't like when I ever have to feel protective of stuff if I've spent a little bit more money on it. I'm, am I the only one that feels that way? I don't know, but <laughs> let me know. Um, so these, I think we can get rid of some of our dish towels that are definitely worn out. These I would get again, and I'm really happy with these. This guy. It worked well, it did work well. But again, I'm trying to think, do I wanna store something extra? Was it really that much better than just using a microfiber cloth and giving everything a quick wipe? I think for our house, because we don't have things that are really tall. If you have vaulted ceilings uh, or anything that's up high, I think this is a game changer. I think it's awesome, like Cass said, and you won't regret it. But for us, our house isn't that big. I don't clean that stuff that often. I don't think that I would buy this again. And in the mop bucket, I think I'm gonna keep that because the kids think it's really fun to mop the floor with it. And we, like, I'm all about making it fun so the kids do more cleaning. So even though it is a little bulkier, it takes up some space in our laundry room floor, I do think it's worth it, so I'm gonna hang on to that. And of course, the glass cleaner and the this from the dollar store, like I said, you can't, like you can't go wrong with that, right? So these were, good investments as well. So overall, not too many duds, and our house is feeling pretty clean. Got the oven <laughs> cleaned. I would not recommend going that extra step with the extra layer of glass. Um, anyway, so it does feel good to have all of this cleaned, but let me just tell you this though. It, this was kind of fun because our house is decluttered and so I wasn't having to choose between spending the time I had today between decluttering and deep cleaning my house. I don't know, can you call this deep cleaning? Um, and so if your house isn't decluttered yet, I think that might be a better use of your time because as we get our house decluttered and simplified, cleaning is so much easier. But I would love to know, would you leave a comment down below? Do you love any of these things? Do you have your own cleaning favorites, products or tools that you swear by? Will you leave that down below because it's so helpful. And if you have any ideas of what I was doing wrong with this, just would, would you share that as well? I love you, I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.